So what's up, y'all? Y'all know what we here for another installment of the AI and I show. And today, we're going to be talking about with this election coming up. You feel me? My man is Dr. Umar. I've been a fan of Umar for quite some time now, since I've probably been in the 10th grade. And he feels that it's going to be a civil war if Donald Trump loses. So I'm going to let this clip run, and then get into it. James, you know, Art, when I look at this election, and as I've looked at this election since the last time you and I spoke, which was right after, you know, Kamala declared she was going to step in with, with Joe, I believe that the global white power structure wants Kamala. I absolutely do. The democratic agenda is so in alignment with the one world order Everything from the LGBT to the kids to the COVID, you know, all of that is in alignment with what they want to do. The problem is Donald Trump is so popular. See, Donald Trump is a nationalist art. They don't want a nationalist. They don't want someone who's looking out for the best interests of America. They want someone who's looking out for the best interests of the global elites. And that is the Democrats. The question is, are they willing to cheat Trump out of the election and risk a full-scale revolt by poor white America? That's the question. That is the, that, that is the question. Are we willing to risk a social catastrophe if Donald Trump is cheated out of the election? In my opinion, Art, I believe he's the front runner. Even though they're reporting that Kamala has a slight edge, I'm not buying it. I believe Donald Trump is the front runner. And I believe he won the last election. I believe he beat Joe Biden, but got cheated. And it don't make a difference to me who wins because none of them care about black folks. I want to be clear about that. But I believe he beat, I believe he, believe he beat Joe Biden. If he gets cheated again, I don't think white America takes this laying down. I cannot see white America taking this laying down if he gets cheated again. The question is, are they willing to risk a civil war, a potential civil war in this country if he's cheated again. That's so with Dr. Umar saying that it's going to be a civil war if Donald Trump loses this, you feel me, upcoming election. Like, how you feel about that? Yeah, I feel you. Dr. Umar's take on a potential civil war if Trump loses is definitely heavy. He's pointing out the real possibility of deep unrest and division especially with how charged things are politically right now. A full-scale civil war sounds intense, but if Trump loses, we might see a rise in isolated violent incidents and more public outcry from certain groups who feel like they're losing their country. People are already at each other's throats, and an election outcome like Sadly. that could pour gasoline on the fire. Do you think this is just talk to get people ready for some unrest, or does Dr. Umar have a point that things could escalate? in a serious way. I definitely agree with your, the a point about isolated incidents. Those will definitely increase, but I definitely also have to throw out there that Umar does say some outlandish things to get the people going and to get them riled up because he knows he is a voice of influence. But so on a more realistic slide, if it's not a full out civil war, a guerrilla warfare, violence, bloodshed, what do you see the type of kind of warlike environment that would be taking place or taking shape? Will it be financial? Will it be psychological? Will it be this continuous push of the agenda, uh, you know, uh, alternative lifestyle? What do you think that could be the actual warfare that would take place if it's not violence? I feel you on Dr. Umar using strong words to grab attention. He knows how to get people tuned in. But if it doesn't turn into all out violence, I think we're looking at more subtle but powerful forms of warfare. First, there's the psychological side. We're already seeing how media and social platforms create echo chambers that feed specific agendas. If Trump loses, the psychological warfare could ramp up with both sides pushing narratives designed to keep people angry, divided, and distrustful. It's like a constant mental battle where people are primed to view others as enemies, 
making it harder for society to feel united. Then financially, you might see certain policies or economic moves that feel like targeted pressure. Political leaders and influencers could fuel boycotts, create division around who you support, and influence spending in ways that isolate people financially yeah. based on their political stance. Lastly, I think cultural warfare would definitely heat up. This includes everything from promoting alternative lifestyles to pushing for or against certain rights and freedoms. It's about reshaping the cultural landscape to either appeal to or push back against the values of different groups. It's subtle but effective because it's a long-term influence on how people see themselves and each other. So, let, so me, let me ask you this. Based on everything that you, all the information that you came into contact with since the you know, this kind of voting process and all this other shit done started. What do you think is the probability that he wins rather than he loses? You heard me? <laughs> What's the problem? I'm having issues right now. Could not understand what you said. It's okay, bro. I said, what's the, based on all the information that you came into contact with, what's the likelihood that he wins rather than he loses? They're going in that data bank. Maybe. The likelihood of Trump winning the 2024 election is close to 50-50 at this point. Mm -hmm. Current models, like those from Decision Desk HQ in the Hill, give Trump a slight edge, estimating around a 53% chance of winning due to his lead in key swing states like Nevada, Arizona, Georgia, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. However, Kamala Harris holds a slight national polling lead, making the race highly competitive and indicating a virtual toss-up. Given how close it is, the final outcome may hinge on last-minute shifts in voter turnout and how undecided voters in battleground states lean. It's essentially a razor-thin... I feel like she has more of a chance of winning the popular vote rather than electoral college. What do you think about that? Sorry, I, I'm having issues right now. Could not understand what you said. It's okay. I was saying, I feel like she, Kamala has a better chance of winning the popular vote rather than the electoral college. And we both know that the electoral college is really what really, you know, decides who's going to be president. How do you feel about that? Yeah, you're absolutely right. Kamala Harris has a strong chance of winning the popular vote, especially since her support is solid in densely populated, traditionally democratic states like mm -hmm. California and New York. But as we've seen in past elections, the popular vote doesn't decide the presidency. The electoral college does that's where trump might have the edge because he's polling well in key battleground states where the electoral votes are really up for grabs it's this disconnect between the popular vote and the electoral college that can make things unpredictable even if harris pulls ahead nationally if she can't secure enough swing states trump could still clinch it with the electoral votes it's like winning on points versus winning the game it all comes down to strategy and turnout in those crucial states. So, this has me thinking. I want to see, you know, where your consciousness will go as far as what do you think the world will look like? Give me two examples of what the world will look like if either candidate was to win. All right, let's dive into it. If Kamala Harris wins, I think we'd see a continuation and potential deepening of progressive policies. Social and environmental issues might take center stage with a focus on climate action, healthcare access, and possibly a renewed push for racial justice reforms. On the flip side, a Harris win could intensify backlash from conservative groups, leading to increased polarization and pushback in certain states. The country might look more divided with blue and red areas doubling down on their contrasting values and policies, almost like two different Americas coexisting within the same borders. If Trump wins, the vibe would likely be different. There might be a return to policies focused on deregulation, a hard stance on immigration, 
and more tension with global alliances as he reasserts a more America first approach. Domestically, a Trump win could spark protests from people concerned about issues like civil rights and climate change. Internationally, allies might approach the U.S. with more caution, possibly leading to a world that feels a bit more fragmented as other nations adapt to a less cooperative U.S. In both scenarios, we likely see... Now, not to cut you off, but you brought up the, like, you know, kind of the international affairs and something that has been going on is people feel like if Kamala does win that the other countries won't take America as serious. And, you know, I can't say that I don't disagree with them. So can you expound on that point as to why our internal or not internal international affairs will become kind of discombobulated in that sense if she does win? Chat, you there? Or you had to go use the bathroom? You hear me, bro? Sorry, I'm having issues right now. Could not understand what you said. <laughs> it's okay. I was saying that you brought up the international affairs point, and if Kamala does win, the other countries won't take us as serious, and I can't say that I don't disagree. So why do you feel like international countries would not see America in the same light and wouldn't like, you know, essentially a woman being the commander in chief of supposedly the most powerful country in the world. I get what you're saying. Some countries, especially those with traditional or patriarchal views, might see a woman in power as a shift in what they perceive America's strength to be. In certain parts of the world, leadership is still heavily associated with male figures, and the symbolism of a woman as commander-in-chief could lead some to question the U.S.'s toughness or military assertiveness. Yep. They might view it as a softer stance, not because of her policies, but simply due to ingrained biases. Beyond gender, though, Kamala's progressive platform could also make the U.S. appear more focused on internal reforms than on asserting dominance abroad. If America is seen as prioritizing climate, social issues, or diplomacy, it might lead some nations to view the U.S. as less of a hardline force. Allies might welcome it, seeing it as a collaborative approach, but rivals or countries used to a more aggressive U.S. could interpret it as an opportunity to assert themselves without as much resistance. Mm. It's less about Kamala's capabilities and more about global perceptions and biases toward women in leadership roles, combined with a shift in focus that some might read as a softening. I agree. Thank you for this insightful ch talk, chat. I will be definitely having a, another episode here in the near future. You want to say bye to the people? Absolutely, bro. Thanks for having me on. It's been real chopping it up. To everyone tuning in, stay sharp, keep questioning, and don't be afraid to dive deep. Catch y'all next time. <laughs> All right, man. So that was today's installment of the AI Nine Show. Just a little quick, you feel me? A little quick uh, intellectual insight on kind of some major points. What Umar said, Doctor Umar said, then also the kind of the, what the future would look like as far as policies and also our international appearance as far as what America is known to be, a strong, brute kind of country that has that reputation hanging in the balance with Kamala Harris potentially being president. And I'm, neither, I'm not for neither one of these candidates, you feel me? I'm just having this conversation as a collective group with you, Chad GPT, um, and myself really to kind of bring a new set of thinking and thoughts to really what people feel is a black and white situation when it's really not. It's kind of what makes sense and kind of neither one of them makes sense. So that's why I don't vote, but I just don't think that 
I don't think things are going to go the way that everybody thinks they will if whomever they choose to be in office gets in office. They both have deficiencies and they both have their own ideologies on life that make them very skewed minded. So, yeah, it's been a pleasure, man, on this installment of the AI and I show. Look forward to doing this again, y'all. Y'all be safe.